Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Hare Krishna. We are learning the chapter Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants and the previous video we discussed up to structure of pollen grains. So a few more points that we have to remember about pollen grains are about pollen allergy. Pollen grains can cause allergy in certain people. It can lead to bronchial uh, afflictions or asthma uh, etc. Then uh, Parthenium is a weed which was brought to India during the imported wheat varieties. It is otherwise called a carrot grass. It is known to cause allergy in many people. The same way if you come to the advantage of pollen grains, they have got some nutrient value also. So many people use them as food supplements. Nowadays these pollen uh, supplements are available either in the tablet forms or in the syrup forms. Next we have to talk about pollen viability. Viability means once the mature pollen is released from the anther, how long it can remain viable or it will be able to uh, grow the pollen tube or uh, able to fertilize. That depends on the type of the plant and also some climatic factors like temperature, humidity etc. It varies from plants to plants. For example, cereals like rice, wheat and all, it is only 30 minutes viability. So once it is released, Within 30 minutes it should land on a suitable stigma, otherwise the pollen cannot germinate. But when you come to families like a Rosaceae, the family of rose, apple etc. or Solanaceae, uh, brinjal, potato, tomato and all or Leguminosae that is dal varieties, there the viability period is for several months. So having said this, now we will move on to female reproductive structure. The female reproductive world of a flower is called a gynecium. Gynecium has its individual unit called a pistil or carpal. So pistil or carpal consists of three parts that is ovary, the basic swollen portion, then a tube is there that is called a style and there is a flat disc shaped structure on top called a stigma. Stigma is basically for receiving the pollen or it's a platform where the pollen can land. The stigma can be sometimes receptive during that time some exudates or some secretion will be there that's called a wet stigma in certain other plants it will be dry the same way the style is the tube through which the pollen grains will grow that means pollen tube will grow and reach the ovary so in some plants the style is hollow whereas in certain other plants it is a filled or a solid when you come to the ovary that's the swollen basal part but after fertilization this ovary will become the fruit Inside the ovary we can see the ovules. The ovules are developing into seeds after fertilization. Now you understood why you are seeing seeds inside the fruit because ovary is becoming fruit. Inside the ovary ovule is becoming the seed. Now when we come to the types of gynecium, some gynecium can have only one carpal. So that condition is called a monocarpillary. Mono means one, only one carpal, for example pea plant. Whereas in certain other plants, many carpels may be there. Especially if it is dicots, it will be multiples of 5 or 5. Then, multicarpillary condition can again be two types. It is syncarpus or apocarpus. Syn means fused. Suppose there are 5 carpels and all the 5 carpels are fused into a single structure, then it is called a syncarpus. Example, hibiscus and also papaver. Whereas, apocarpus is a free, means 5 carpels are there or three carpels are there all of them are free that condition is called a apocarpus they are not fused so example is mycelia so in your textbook there is a diagram where these two are shown papaver and mycelia and hibiscus uh, you may be asked to identify or give examples of apocarpus and syncarpus mycelia is apocarpus whereas papaver is syncarpus where else we are studying papaver it is uh, dealt with in drug addiction or drug abuse there we are learning about papaver somniferum which is poppy plant it's a source of the depressant morphine right now let us study ovule or a megasporangium ovule is the part within which the female gametophyte or embryo sac will form within the female embryo sac the female gamete is located okay so inside the ovule ovule is otherwise called a megasporangium because we use the term micro for all the 
pollen grain and structures because microspore, microspore mother cell, micro small was used there. But here we are using mega big. Okay, so the mega sporangium is nothing but ovule. But is the ovule the gamete or female gamete? No. Inside the ovule, there will form a structure called the embryo sac. Embryo sac is the female gametophyte. Female gametophyte means what? Gamete producing structure. Which was the male gametophyte? Pollen grain. So within the embryo sac, the female gamete will form, then fertilization. So we will now learn first the structure of ovule. The diagram also can be asked. So depending on the position, the ovule can be of different types. The most common type is called the anatropous ovule or it's a kind of inverted ovule. That is what is given in your textbook. So to draw the ovule, you can start with the central part. You give a circle. Okay, initially inside this uh, tissue called a nucellus is present. Just like a microsporangium we learn inside that sporogenous tissue initially present from which pollen grains develop, right? The same way here, initially the cell is called a nucellus present. So here we don't have to show the details of the cell, we just have to draw the diagrammatic sketch. Uh, so uh, here next is a, a layer of protective covering called the integument. So this is the first integument first integument, there is one more integument called the second integument or the outer integument. So this one you have to bring here and take it out, making it into the stalk. So then the stalk is coming from here. The stalk is called a funicle because we know this ovule is kept within the ovary. So within the ovary there is a cushion shaped structure called a placenta. The ovule is attached to the placenta with a small stalk called a funicle. Now the funicle will be attached to the integument. Okay, so this is the second integument or the outer integument. Okay, so this stalk is called a funicle. Funicle is the stalk with which the ovule is attached to the placenta within the ovary. Then where the funicle attaches with the integument, that part is called a hilum. Here the outer protective covering called the outer integument. Then we have the inner integument. Okay. Then our upside or this part there is opening. The integuments are not closing. So this opening is called as micropyle. The opposite pole of micropyle is called a chalacel end. Okay, so here the funicle or the stalk, it attaches with the ovule or the integument by hilum. The two integuments are outer and inner integuments. Then micropyle is the part which is open where the integuments are not touching each other. Opposite of micropyle is called a chalacel. These are the parts of a typical anatropous ovule. But there are plants with the variations. Uh, sometimes the integument may not be present. That is called a technic. Example, the sandalwood tree. When you come to gymnosperms, uh, there will be only one integument. But in mostly angiosperms, there are two integuments. So if one integument, it is called a unitechnic. And this condition is called a bitechnic. Inside this, uh, what is there? The nucellar tissue. That is a nursing tissue. They are also nutritive in function. This is nucellus. So within this embryo sac will form which is the female gametophyte. Now we will learn the process of megasporogenesis or how is embryo sac forming. So we will see that uh, in the case of pollen grains we saw that all the cells in the sporogenous tissue like pollen mother cells were capable of producing the pollen grains. But uh, we know males large number of gametes should be formed but in females the case is different we do not want those many numbers so we want only very limited number or one so in this case all the cells need not become the megaspore mother cell so towards the micropyle end one cell will become the megaspore mother cell it is only one cell which is turning into megaspore mother cell so this is called the archisporeal cell they can become the megaspore mother cell. So one archisporeal cell in the archisporeal that word is not necessary to mention. Uh, one cell in the micropylar end will be becoming the megaspore mother cell. 
Now, you know that mother cell will undergo which division? Meiosis. So, this cell is dividing into four. So, we get four daughter cells because meiosis will give rise to four daughter cells. So, we got four megaspore. So, megaspore mother cell. What is the ploidy of megaspore mother cell? It is diploid. It divides in by meiosis and it forms four mega spores but here we want like pollen tetrad we got here four mega spores we got but here again we do not want to have all the four we want only one so the top ones will degenerate only the one towards the chalacel end will remain there understood so this kind of development is called a monosporic development or polygonum type of development mono means what one only one megaspore will be functional rest all will degenerate so these all will degenerate they die off out of four cells now how many left only one so uh, these four megaspores are haploid because it's after reduction division out of this only one functional megaspore will be there the one megaspore which is remaining at the end that is called a functional megaspore because that is going to develop into the new uh, new embryo cell. Now we will see what happens to this megaspore, functional megaspore. So during monosporic development we have only one megaspore left out that is called a functional megaspore. Now this functional megaspore will develop into embryo sac. Let us see how it is happening. So this will undergo now mitotic division because reduction division already over now only mitosis is possible but here the division is not complete it is only the nuclear division happening cytoplasmic division is not happening first the nucleus will divide to form two daughter nuclei the two will further divide to form four four will again divide to form eight so till eight nucleated stage the division continues but once the eight nucleated stage reaches it will start forming the walls so the three nuclei will move to the micropylar end and forms two, three cells there. The other three will come and make wall here and that will form another three cells near the chalacel end. And in the central cell there are two nuclei. I will redraw this and explain but you remember how it happened. Functional megaspore underwent repeated free nuclear division to reach to eight nucleated stage then wall formation starts. Three nuclei will form uh, walls on the micropylar end. Another three will come to the chalacel end and two nuclei will remain in the central cell. This is what we discussed so far and finally we are getting the embryo sac. So embryo sac has got eight nuclei we know. Three near the micropylar end. This is a micropylar end. Three near the chalacel end. Two in the central cell. So there are eight nuclei. But how many cells are there? First is cell. Cell means once there is a wall around the nucleus only we consider it as a cell. So here one cell, second cell, third cell, fourth, fifth, sixth. Then this will remain as a cell because it has got walls in, around it. So that is the seventh cell. Seventh cell is the central cell. We can say that embryo sac is eight nucleated and seven cell structure. You may get a question to justify that. You have to tell like this. There are eight nuclei, three in the micropylar end. 3 chalacel and, and 2 at the central cell whereas there are only 7 cells. Now let us see what are the different cells coming in this. The near the micropylar and the 3 cells are together called a egg apparatus. Egg apparatus consists of 2 different types of cells. The central cell is the egg cell which is actually taking part in the fertilization. Whereas the other 2 are called the synergids. The synergids have some cellular thickenings inside that that is called a filiform apparatus. There are special thickening, cellular thickenings inside the synergids. Then their function is to guide the pollen tube. During the pollination, pollen tube will be coming here. So it will guide it to the gamete, female gamete. That's the function of filiform apparatus. That can come for one more question. Coming to the chalacel end, there are three cells, they are collectively called as antipodal cells. After uh, fertilization, they just degenerate. Whereas in the central cell, this is the central cell, please don't mistake uh, with the these two cells, this entire part is called a central cell. The central cell has got two nuclei. Those nuclei are called a polar nuclei or a secondary nucleus. So 
during fertilization this female gamete and these polar nuclei will be involving that about that we will study in detail later uh, the most common type of entry of pollen tube into the female embryo sac is through the micropyla end that is called a porogamy in certain cases it may come through the chalasal end also that is called a chalasogamy in very rare cases sometimes it can be through the funicle region or the through the integument that is called a mesogamy hope you understood all the topics that i taught today next video we will discuss pollination thank you for watching my video please like share and subscribe to my channel biology my passion